At this point, it might seem like that with computer algebra systems, I could pretty much tackle any integral that I could possibly ever be interested in. And while that may seem true, we're going to see that there's a slight problem with that thought. Let's take a look really quickly at some even more complicated indefinite integrals. Let's consider this function here. This is a function of e to the negative x squared, and I want to try to see how I might deal with this. So really quickly, if we were to personally go and try to find this antiderivative, we might find this is very complicated. First off, this is not a derivative rule that we know from Calc 1. It's difficult to see any algebra we could use to simplify it. It doesn't seem to be able to be subject to a u substitution. Integration by parts? That seems tough. There's no trig in there, so trig identities are out. Trig substitution I would prefer to avoid. I don't even really see how that would work. I definitely can't use partial fractions because I don't have a polynomial over a polynomial. I can tell you right now, you can search every table of integrals and you will not find an answer for this guy. But maybe Wolfram can help, right? I mean, maybe that's possible. Let's even go to Wolfram and see what we come up with here. I want an integral of e to the power of negative x squared. Perfect. There it is. All right, Wolfram, here it is. That's the thing I'm looking for. And it says that my answer is 1 half root pi erf x uh, plus a c. <laughs> okay, what the heck is erf x? Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, wait, right down here. It says erf x is the error function. Okay, well, what the heck do I do with that? Let's see, uh, what is the error function? Uh, okay, error function, uh, Wikipedia. Okay, let's, uh, let's check that out. In mathematics, the error function, also called the Gauss error function, often denoted ERF, is defined as, oh gosh, 1 over root pi integral from what? Negative infinity to infinity? What does that even mean? If e to the... N oh, no. Okay, this is getting really messy and really weird. What we're going to see here is that we actually do not have any easy way to go ahead and write an antiderivative here. But let's take a look at maybe a complicated way of doing this. First, I can note that clearly... If I have, say, my function here is g of x, that's the function I'm integrating. I can see that this function is continuous, and by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I should know that if I took a capital F function and made it equal to an integral from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared dt. Remember, this is a weird type of function. Notice my variable again is up here in this upper bound. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus in Calc 1 told us how to take the derivative of a function like this. You might recall this, that it said what you would have to do is take this upper bound and replace that in place of t. If this upper bound is more complicated than just x, follow up with a chain rule. So we know that this function f of x has the property that the derivative of that is just going to be e to the negative x squared times 1, because that would be the chain rule for that bound, or in essence, this is really just g of x. So there is a function whose, ant whose derivative does turn into g of x. It's, it's this function. It's this guy right here. But notice that's not a nice function. That's not a pretty function. In fact, it's, it's really messy. Like, suppose for the sake of argument, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to ask a question like, um, I want to find the amount of area under my g of x curve on the interval from, say, uh, 0 to 5, right? Maybe that's what I want to do. I want to find the area under g of x from 0 to 5. 
Well, what I would be able to do then is to say if I wanted to integrate g of x from 0 to 5, no big deal. Fundamental theorem of calculus would say just take f and evaluate that from 0 to 5, right? That's the antiderivative. But notice <laughs> that by integrating this, if I go to f and I plug in, let's see, f of 5 minus f of 0, notice what that creates. If I go to f of 5, that just says I'm going to have an integral from 0 to 5 of e to the negative t squared dt minus an integral from 0 to 0 of e to the negative t squared dt. Well, this part turns into 0, and so the integral from 0 to 5 of my function is just the integral from 0 to 5 of my function. That is, while this is a true antiderivative, it is not helpful. It doesn't really allow me to simplify or evaluate things like areas under curves that I might want. In fact, what we can actually see or uh, state here is that it can be proven that uh, e to the negative x squared has no antiderivative of what we would call elementary functions. We won't get too technical into what an elementary function is, but you can think of it as all the functions that you already know and love thus far in mathematics. Like no sines or cosines or logarithms or polynomials or root functions, like nothing like that could ever be used with this. Now you might say, well, Kyle, who cares? So there's like one function out there that you can't find an antiderivative for. Who gives a rip? Well, I got a question. How many of you might be taking or moving into a career that involves statistics? Because if you're moving into a career with statistics, this type of an integral here is unbelievably valuable. It's paramount. Because this is actually what helps us to describe what we would call a normal distribution. It helps me calculate all sorts of probabilities in a statistics class. Without being able to integrate this function, you cannot have statistics, which means all things based on statistics fall apart. We can't just ignore this. Even worse than that, this isn't the only function with no easy antiderivative. There are plenty of other functions that also do not have easy antiderivatives. You could try uh, to see if you can come up with antiderivatives for maybe just some of these seemingly simple functions. But these are actually very, very difficult. Try to, try to find an antiderivative of them. They're very complicated. So it's very important that we try to recognize that the list of integration techniques that we've had, that we've been working on for so long, while they're beautiful and they help us do so many things, they're still incomplete. There's still something missing because there are some functions that we need to integrate and none of the techniques that we've been through so far can help us. Our goal then in the next couple sections is going to be to have to go back to the basics. If I can't find an antiderivative for a function like e to the negative x squared, then how am I ever going to find an area under it? I can't use fundamental theorem of calculus then, right? It's not going to work. So how did we approximate or guess areas under curves when we didn't know about the fundamental theorem of calculus back in Calc 1? Well, we had to approximate using rectangles, the idea of Riemann sums. In the next section, we're going to start to take a look at this complicated integral of e to the negative x squared and start to see how can we work with an integral that's too difficult to actually directly integrate. And as you might be able to recall, back in our integration techniques, there is a new mystery number 10 technique. And to find that technique, we will actually need to go ahead and spend the rest of this chapter and the next two chapters just to develop that final and tenth technique. 
I encourage you again, try to go through, practice using the table of integrals, practice using Wolfram in a good way, and uh, we'll see in the next section how we can start to tackle these difficult integrals together.